Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're new to the channel, then please check out the back catalogue. If you're a returning viewer, then thank you very much, folks. This is day two of our epic NC500 trip. Where do you go when you're young, when you're restless, when you're fun, cause you're desperate? Okay then folks, so what has today got in store for us? Well, you'll see there, uh, just in front of me, high up on the headland here, we are at Dunnett Head, Dunnett Head Lighthouse to be precise. We've got east over here, a lovely sunrise. It's a little bit chilly because it's early doors just yet. Um, so what does day two hold? Well, we're gonna go from Dunnett Head, which is the most northerly point on mainland Britain and the British Isles. And then we're heading across west into the very open, very wild and very barren Sutherland, an area that I'm really looking forward to it's very very sparsely populated we have another wild camp tonight uh, on the banks of Loch Assent so really looking forward to that we just want this uh, early morning mist that we can see to clear away there and uh, we should be in store for another very good day mid uh, to low teens is the temperature forecast so uh, yeah we're gonna get our gear packed up now from our uh, little bit of a windy wild wild camp last night I uh, will get on the bikes and we'll get this show underway so as our intro indicated there we're uh, just about to get underway now we're just on the final stretches of the pack up and in uh, fine adage certainly biking buddies adage when you're camping I take nothing but photographs and leave no trace of you being here and this was our utterly spectacular camp last night we're looking out eastward the very very distant headland that we can see right over there that is John O'Groats and then we have the Orkney Islands over here and we're right on the very northeastern tip of Sutherland and our course lies westward which is that way I'm very much looking forward to today. Today is very definitely the uh, barren wilderness. So while Cal just finishes putting his uh, last little bits on, I'm going to extricate the bike uh, back onto uh, the service road and we're going to get ourselves underway. Fantastic. We're tumbling off uh, Dunnett Headland now just to pick uh, back up onto uh, the main NC500, the, uh, I was going to say arterial route, but the prescribed route. And that's what I'm liking about uh, the journey that we've picked or the route that we've planned is that uh, we do follow the NC round as I'm sure you'll appreciate but we also do deviate off the beaten track to these absolutely fantastic wild places and if you're certainly thinking of doing the NC if uh, these videos amongst the many thousands of others are inspiring you then yep yeah, do your planning and get yourself off the beaten track a little bit or as much as time will allow and what a beautiful start to the day. Now that mist has burnt off, it's gonna be uh, reasonably breezy all the way through the day, blowing a force five. Present temperature is uh, nine degrees and climbing. It's just clicked into 10 degrees there. So uh, yes, I do believe it's gonna be quite pleasant once we get to past that mid morning stage. So we're quite up and open here and as we're pushing our way west we're just starting to get in the distant horizon there you probably won't be able to make out on the gopro but the naked eye certainly can the differential between the tops of the mountains with the snow caps and the clouds and that is very tantalizingly drawing me in that's certainly what i'm here for uh, just as much as the riding so yeah we're enjoying some fantastic roads as you can see just again these nice long sweeping bends we've still got um, a two-lane carriageway, so a classic A-road as it were, as you and I would recognise, but uh, fairly quickly as the day goes on that will diminish and drop down to a single track road, certainly towards the latter part of today. We've got uh, the North Atlantic on our right hand side there, just keeping us company as we bid farewell to uh, the North Sea behind us. I mean, how could you not like roads like these? Uh, long, long, long progressive bends, just absolutely perfect. Okay, so morning brew dispatched Halladale Cafe and Bistro. So if you are passing this way and you're coming through, definitely worth a stop, very welcoming. Decent toilets, lovely coffee. They've even got a little NC500 shop there that sells uh, your essentials. You can see the weather that we've got now is absolutely fantastic. Uh, so we're gonna push on now to uh, our first stop of the day, which is Strathy Point, Strathy Point Lighthouse, where we'll uh, jump off the bike and have a wander out to the headland. 
and have a look at the lighthouse. So uh, yeah, the weather forecast has certainly turned out to be uh, very favourable for us, despite the sketchy start that we had this morning. So we are underway again, and uh, yeah, fantastic weather. It's now 10 o'clock in the morning. The forecast, as I was mentioning there, has done exactly what it was supposed to do, which was burn all of the mist off. The wind has eased slightly, so we're probably blowing about a four. Uh, which isn't too much a drama so hopefully it doesn't uh, increase anymore we'll be able to get the drone up in the air um so yeah we're just leaving this uh, beautiful little town town little village we've got these fantastic views that you can see there across to uh, my right from miracam as we climb up and over the tops and we're heading to strathy point to the lighthouse hopefully we'll get some uh, drone today and it's proven to be a very, very good start to the day. It was a little bit sketchy this morning. As I say, quite a breezy night. And it was quite chilly packing the tents up. But then, hey, we are in uh, Easter. It's very, very early year. Perfect. So there's the Nationals. Let's get on with it and uh, get ourselves over to Strathy Point. So that was quite a pleasant walk in. I'm just down at uh, Strathy Point Lighthouse there. You can see that up at the top behind me. So I'm going to work my way down towards uh, the front of the headland and hopefully we'll get a view of the lighthouse from the front. I'll also get the drone in the air as well, so uh, sit tight. We'll uh, get a little bit of drone footage in a second. A little bit muddy under wheel here, so uh, yeah, what an amazing place. And can you believe this weather? We've got all of the thermals stripped out of our gear now. The base layer's out. And uh, on the little headland up to here, we were actually showing 17 degrees on the bike, so uh, yeah, it just goes to show you, have faith in that forecast, have faith in what you're doing, just step out, venture out, um, and just do a little bit, because uh, yeah, it was a, a sultry 6, 7 degrees this morning, blowing a 4, 6, and you certainly wouldn't have thought for one second that you'd have the weather that we've got at the moment. I mean, just look around me, this is absolutely fantastic. We're going to get the drone up now and just pop it out over this headland, fly it over the top of the lighthouse. So yeah, let's uh, cue that drone. So our topography is very definitely changing now. We've uh, got a much, much more wild and open and upland feel about where we are. The roads are absolutely incredible, as you can see. Just these long, long progressive bends. You can just gently feed the bike in, not particularly rushing, just not even hustling, just enjoying the undulation and the flow. And look around us. Got the guys there behind me, we've got sun on our backs, it's 18 degrees, wow, 18 degrees, that's a full, well, best part of 12 degrees warmer uh, than it was this morning. So yes, the forecast very definitely has come good, and man alive are we enjoying this. Absolutely epic, beyond belief epic. And certainly, uh, yes, we're getting uh, tantalizingly closer to these bigger mountains, and that's where we'll be this evening. Pushing uh, ever westward. Look at that, we're starting to see the mountain ranges. 
Yes, that's what we've come for. As well as these roads, of course. This is just biking heaven. Absolute biking heaven, make no bones about it. I can't remember the last time that I actually touched the brake. This is just a nice sweeping feel. I love it when you come up over these crests and you just, a whole new vista opens out in front of you. Nice long sweeping bends to feed through. And there we have it right in front of us. Look at that. That really is a sight to behold. I could quite literally film all of this. What a beautiful landscape. Would you just take a look at that? <clears throat> that is absolutely incredible. That's where we're heading. Those mountains, dear boy, those mountains. What an absolutely breathtaking section of road this is. Absolutely superb. I would highly recommend this. I know that we're on day two of our adventure in reality we're on day three day one was the ride up to Inverness but in terms of the NC 500 yes we are on day two and this is fantastic if you've been thinking about doing the NC I would wholeheartedly say just get it done guys what an amazing experience this is So we've just had an absolutely stunning run across there down towards Tongue. We've just pulled in for a, a quick pit stop here. We've got the Weaver's Cafe here behind me. Uh, just a little bit of a lunch and a refreshment break and then we're going to push on. We're going to get some fuel. A uh, few lights are uh, just starting to flicker on now. So uh, yeah, we're doing really well. Um, thoroughly enjoying this. The scenery as you've seen is just getting more and more spectacular. So stick with us folks. There's plenty more to come here on our NC500 Day 2 biking adventure. Wow, would you look at that for a view. Absolutely breathtaking. And that, my friends, that is exactly where we're heading. So we're going to go across the Tongue Causeway, which is uh, down there. Just off to my right there behind me. And that takes us around all through these mountains. Utterly spectacular. Just had to flip the camera on there and share that. We're just on our way to get a little bit of fuel just after our lunch stop. But yes, what an unbelievable view that is. Well, oh well, yeah, this is uh, a place called Tung, quite interesting name. And this is uh, the Tung Causeway that we're riding across. We just tracked the boys with the drone there, as you've seen. And let's uh, spin mirror cam a little bit, just so you can have a bit of a spectacular view of what we are looking at. Wowzers. This is quite literally 
an amazing place I know I've said it before but if you guys are thinking of doing the NC just bite that bullet get it done this is incredible and to ride in scenery like this just amazing yep absolutely amazing so we'll spin you back around there we are welcome back so we've got the boys there behind me that you can see let me move you up and try that again so we've got the boys there behind me that you can see and we're pushing on now i believe our next stop is going to be smoo cave full tanks worth of fuel now so we can just stretch our legs a little bit and enjoy these beautiful long sweeping roads that stretches across this top side of Sutherland absolutely spectacular oh my life look at this this is turning into one of those rides where every bend that you turn around every crest that you come over you're just greeted with utterly stunning scenery we've got an absolutely amazing piece of road that I'm sure you'll agree as you've been watching this footage but wow look at this Would you just look at this for a stretch of road? Single track road, we've pretty much got it all to ourselves. Very little traffic, we are so early in the year. So yeah, there's still little spatterings of snow across the top of the fells here. And yeah, this road is just ribboning our way deep into these mountains. And that sense of excitement that just wells up inside you from deep inside you that is very definitely what i'm riding with at the moment there's absolutely no haste on this ride it isn't the type of ride that you'd want we just got a nice smooth rhythmic pace that's perfect for this type of road condition and road surface so let's just enjoy this road well, we've clicked into a slightly better road surface nice and smooth nice and rhythmic just heaven sent So here we are, I'm not entirely sure what this place is called, but wow, would you look at that for a beach. Crystal clear waters, turquoise sands. Wow, that is, uh, that is incredible looking. Thank you. Look at that. And you can see why they uh, say the zip wire here. You can certainly see why they uh, often say the reports when you read the guidebooks and things that uh, you could be in the Caribbean or somewhere and very definitely you could looking at beaches like that I'm not sure you get roads quite as spectacular or as good as this in the Caribbean but we are certainly enjoying one amazing ride look at that wow that really is spectacular absolutely utterly Amazing, keep the bike on the road, Paul. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite literally amazing. And I'm fairly sure that uh, almost every beach that we see now is uh, of that ilk as we work our way along this uh, very northwestern edge of Sutherland, which we are now firmly working our way towards Durness. Schmoo Cave, or Small Cave, Schmoo Cave. That is our next destination. Oh my life, I just cannot get enough of this road today. This is one of those carry on forever days. Wow, what an epic piece of road that was. So here we are, the very famous Smoo Cave. So we're gonna nip down. It's just down there, literally, I believe it's one of, or reputed to be one of um, the largest sea cave entrances in the British Isles. There's our bikes, we managed to squeeze in. You can see this fantastic weather has really pulled everybody out today. So yeah, here we are, lots and lots of people. That certainly is very big. It's living up to its reputation to be one of the largest sea caves 
well, it'll be quite interesting when we get inside and uh, we just lose this lose the sun well let's, let's have a quick look the sheer size and scale of this place very impressive indeed right let's go have a look up and through here it is a little bit narrow i'm hoping that the uh, light adjustment the autofocus on the gopro is picking this up hey there little dog wow that's the main in intake of water then comes in from this waterfall down there that is quite impressive that looks equally impressive on the way out look at that wow there we go back into the light yeah so as i say a little bit touristy but uh, well worth a look nonetheless so we've been here smooth cave tick that one off the list let me give you a sit rep then so we have now left Durness and we're heading kind of southwest southwest ish we're just starting the, the very top curve section to run down the west coast and we're looking to pick our wild camp up tonight which will be on the side on the banks of Loch Assent utterly spectacular road still and the scenery is just getting better and better and better and look at this vista that we've got in front of us which is utterly amazing the mountains are getting bigger the scenery is getting more and more breathtaking and wow look at that indeed my friends look at that indeed yep yeah, this is certainly what we came for utterly unbelievable but our destination lies that way and what a road ahead of us look at this quite literally breathtaking So sometimes when you're on these rides you just need to stop and get off the bike and just absorb where you are i'm fairly sure when we crest over that hill over there we're going to have uh, some even more magnificent scenery than we've got already in front of us but just have a look at what we're looking at this vast vast emptiness and with the snow across the top of the ridges there it just looks utterly incredible You can see why they call it Scotland's last great wilderness and it certainly is. 
It is the most uninhabited part of the British Isles and that's very much what I wanted to come to see. So today for me is definitely a box ticking day. There's our bikes there, Carl and Richie. Uh, the guy at the back, he's just pulled in to uh, do what we're doing, which is just a quick photo shoot. And uh, yeah, just a, an unimaginably beautiful place. So tranquil, but yet so wild at the same time. I cannot wait to see what's over that horizon there. And this is where we get that long awaited view over the tops and look at that. Every single scrap of the horizon is just filled with mountain. Amazing. And we're still riding in 16 degrees of heat. Can you believe that? And man alive, Scotland, you have not failed to deliver. We are seriously tramping along this road. The scenery around it is, is just uh, breathtaking and to be fair, you could film the entire lot. Now obviously I'm not going to do that, so you need to come up here and experience this for yourself. What I am doing is just trying to uh, film a few of the spots that give you a little bit of a feel and a bit of a flavour for where we are and what we're doing. And the reason I flicked the camera on here, aside of the fact that we're on a beautiful road for some very long, nice progressive sweep of men's, is we've just had hove into view uh, some rather spectacular mountains we've uh, passed one mountain range as you saw then we have uh, a stretch of land that we're in at the moment which is this uh, undulation and uh, let me see if I can show you over there to my right which we'll see in a second uh, we have this monstrous hulk of a Munro just hoving into view We'll get it off the top of this hill, I'm quite sure. And uh, yeah, it just looks very, very foreboding, very formidable. I mean, if you're like me and you love these wild, wide open spaces, man alive, this place has just got my name written all over it and yours too. Aha, here we come up to Kyleskew Bridge. Now well, this is one of those places that we most definitely want to stop at. This is the very iconic Kyleskew Bridge. So you typically cannot come all the way to Scotland and not video the most famous iconic bridge, which is the one that we're presently on at the moment, which is the Kyleskew Bridge. This is very... Uh, very synonymous it's very uh, typical of well it's not typical it's very iconic is the word iconic of the NC 500 is this bridge I don't believe it's got some uh, national architectural status now has been uh, pleasing on the eye aesthetically pleasing Kalisky Hotel yeah absolutely fantastic what a place so we're on our way now with sat nav is telling me that I've got seven miles to go to our wild camping spot so over the top of here and my oh my oh my look at that absolutely staggering i most definitely must come back here again i think you would just utterly love and absorb everything about the nc500 wow oh wow oh wow look at that that's got to be the most used phrase of the day today is wow would you look at that that really is quite spectacular so any moment now we're going to uh, just see our wild camping spot or one of the wild camping spots we'll see uh, Ardvrek Castle which will be to the left when we get down to this T-junction and this is where we're going to uh, check out our overnight stay hopefully it won't be buried with camper vans there's certainly a lot more camper vans around here today would be a, a crying shame if it were we may just need to get our elbows out if that is the case and I can see the top of the castle there the turrets so let's just have a quick look at Ascent okay so this I believe was potentially one option was it was it was it was it was it so that's all fenced off now yeah, that was an... Oh, no, it's... Ooh, la, 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 la. Yeah, this is going to be a, a little bit challenging to find our camping spot, if I'm honest. 
So let's shut the camera down and uh, we'll pick the footage up when hopefully we've got a camping spot. Thank you. 